Hello and welcome to Murphy's Garden and Happy New Year. I um, look forward to another year in the garden, 2023. So one of my first jobs this year, um, I've got to make a start now on cutting back the perennial borders. Um, you can leave them and I have left them. Sometimes I, do, I used to do them in the autumn, but as time's gone on, I've got to quite enjoy the look of them over the winter. So I've enjoyed them over the winter period, but now um, to find balance between leaving them and enjoying them or cutting them back um, because I've got to start getting the garden ready for the bulbs and the um, spring display. So I'm going to choose to start uh, making that um, making some progress now in the garden and starting cutting back because I also want to mulch the borders really well as well before the um, spring things come through. So behind me um, you can see this is a grass, this is miscanthus. Now there are two types of grasses, there are deciduous grasses and evergreen grasses. Miscanthus falls in the category of deciduous grass, that means it um, gets new growth every year. So as I say, I've left this over the winter. It looks lovely and provides lots of nice structure and interest as well for the birds and insects and things over the winter period. Um, but now before the new growth starts to come through in early spring, uh, if you leave cutting it back too late, then it's difficult to do because you end up cutting the new um, green growth back. So I usually advocate doing it in January. So that's one job I'm going to do today. So there are different ways you can tackle this job. Um, you can hear apologies for the noise in the background. Alice has got the shredder going and that's another reason why I want to do this today because then I can give him all the bits and he can shred it and it can go straight on the compost heap. So different ways you can tackle this. Uh, one is to just do it with hand shears. Uh, this is a bit, let me just get my glove on, hang on. This is a bit hard going this way. So you can just get in there like that do it with the old hand shears but a quicker way of doing it is doing it with the hedge hedge trimmer and you can some people tie string around it to, so it doesn't blow everywhere but I can't be bothered so I'm just going to go for it Ornamental grasses come in all shapes, colours and sizes and are really valuable for adding colour, structure and texture to the garden. Deciduous grasses have attractive summer foliage but in winter the dead golden brown stems add much needed interest to a winter garden. Like herbaceous perennials, the foliage dies in winter and new growth is made from the ground in spring. By late winter, after the rain, frost, wind and snow, the foliage starts to look tatty and at this point it's best to cut it all back to the ground in preparation for the new growth emerging in spring. All deciduous grasses can be cut back at this time. This one is called Miscanthus Yakushima dwarf, but any Miscanthus, Calamagrotus, Melina and Aconocloa can be treated in the same way. Other perennial grasses that we have growing in this garden are the Melania Carulia Strathlin Quill or Purple Moor Grass, um, which will also be cut back at this time of year. And the other one we have is um, Penicetum Carly Rose or Fountain Grass, one of my favourites, absolutely beautiful grass and it stays um, well behaved too. And while we're on the subject of being well behaved, this is a grass that really isn't. This is Ribbon Grass or Phalaris or Rundinesia. Um, brought this from our previous garden in our last house. It's attractive grass, but is very, very invasive. And I dug it out from another part of the garden and instead of just getting rid of it, I stuck it in this area. And as you can see, it's now taking over and it's really got to be removed. So I'm going to cut that back or have cut it back. I'll gather it all up and then I'm going to try and dig it out. So I'm now just getting on with the problem of getting rid of this ribbon grass. So having cut it all back, I'm now just lifting it up. So when I say just, it's easier said than done. Quite hard work, um, not helped by the fact that the ground is quite frozen actually, but it is wet. So that makes it easier once you once you crack through the um, frost. But um, you can see it's got this very fibrous kind of root. Um, hence, and it's so sort of um, these rhizomes that pop up all over the place. So um, for that reason, I'm definitely going to get rid of it. I don't want it in my garden. There are far nicer grasses to plant. So this one, although it looks nice, is not going to stay. So we'll get rid of that. And then throughout the summer, we'll just have to keep an eye on this area and um, look out for it because it will keep returning. I don't doubt, but we've got a bit more over there still to do. But you can see I've taken all this 
all this out so far, so I'm getting on quite well. And here in the sunken garden, another two miscanthus. These ones fairly newly planted, so same treatment as before. So that's deciduous or perennial grasses taken care of. And next come evergreen grasses. Evergreen grasses such as Carex, Festuca or Lazula are not pruned hard in this way. And you will know the difference because they are still green and attractive looking in colour and are not dead looking like perennial grasses. This one, which is a Carex Evergold, as you can see, still looks quite fresh and um, green in colour. For these grasses, simply pull out any dead or brown looking leaves in the spring. Some grasses, however, are a bit of a mix between the two and at this time of year appear to have some nice green leaves mixed with some brown dead leaves and these grasses are classed as semi-evergreen. These include steeper and pheasant tail grass. In this case, just use your own judgment and assess the state of the plant. I did grow pheasant tail grass, but I find that after a couple of years it ran out of steam and I find it better just to replace it rather than cut it back. And this was easily done because it seeds absolutely everywhere. And it was for this reason I did actually remove pheasant tail grass from my garden. Steeper Gigante, on the other hand, I absolutely love and it provides the wow factor in our big perennial borders, especially when it's lit by the morning or evening sun. Most of the books will tell you to cut the flowers back and just remove the dead leaves, but I find this quite hard to do as there are usually quite a lot of brine in it and the leaves are thin, numerous and quite fiddly to cut back. Um, if you wish to invigorate the plant, then simply cut it to the grind as we did with the deciduous grasses and fresh new growth will return in the spring. And this is my preferred technique and I've started now doing this every year, but you can just do it every two or three years if you prefer. Okay, so these are the steepers. You'll see that I have um, started clearing these borders. I did a bit yesterday. Um, and the, I'll just show you this one I actually left deliberately just to see so the flowers, have, they all start to get broken and they start to fall over in the wind at this time of year. So they need to be tidied up. So I started with cutting the flowers back, but I haven't cut back the, the leaves. You can see these are green, they're evergreen, but there's also a lot of brown mixed in with them. And you'll also see that here, um, I've got them in front of this obelisk and if it gets too big, then it will, um, the rose will struggle to establish and grow up the obelisk. I don't I might split that one. And this one here is also getting far too big. <clears throat> so I'm probably gonna dig that one up and split it a bit as well. So let's get on and first begin by cutting it back. And now we're just by the pond. We've got another um, steeper gigantia here and a grass also in the pond. Same treatment as before, just going to level them. And just a little um, deciduous grass by the pond. I won't do that with the hedge clippers because otherwise obviously it will fall in the water. And I'm just doing this with the secateurs.
there we are so a bit of tidying up to do but a nice quick and easy little job that keeps you nice and warm at this time of year so thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video bye for now in the tray. <coughs> hey, who said Murphy? Oh, that's <laughs> naughty. Oh.